Hey fellow models, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, or oh, hi hi if you're new. My name's Kat and I'm a freelance illustrator from Australia. Um, so today I'm really excited about this video, this is something I've been wanting to do forever. Um, I've always loved using, um, I started out using watercolours uh, and I've now moved on to acrylic, like washed acrylic and ink. Um, and I've always hated feeling kind of boxed in, in what surfaces I can pick from uh, that will actually hold that kind of medium. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just get bored of like just plain old white watercolour paper really easily. So I decided to try and find some other surfaces that you can use uh, watercolours or ink on. Um, and it's sort of been a couple of years actually since I started thinking about doing this video and over those years I've collected uh, several different sort of papers, canvases and even a board that I'm really excited to try. So today what I'm going to do is I've got lots of little samples of all these different types of papers and canvases and stuff and um, I'm going to do test runs of the different types of ways that I would usually use that sort of surface and use that medium. Um, and just see how, how they hold up and hopefully uh, it's useful to you guys, anyone who uses that sort of stuff, uh, just to see what else is out there and what else is available to you. So let's get started. Okay, so here are all my little test papers. Um, I've got just a normal watercolour paper that's 300 GSM, just like a plain white one, which is what everyone usually uses for this sort of thing. So that's going to be like our reference piece that we can refer back to. Um, and then I've got some blocking fit paper, uh, which is 300 GSM as well. I've got both blue and cream. Uh, then I've got some Stonehenge, which is 250 GSM. It's a little bit uh, smoother than the blocking fit. And then I've got some watercolor canvas, which is seems to be readily available now in a lot of art stores, um, as well as some printing canvas. The printing canvas uh, was actually given to me by my printers. Um, they're just all these offcuts of the canvas that they use to print artwork and photos on. And finally, the thing I'm most excited to try, which is the uh, ampersand aqua board. Uh, it's essentially a clay surface placed on top of wood. I've got the flat board, but you can also get it in like a, I think it's like a one inch cradle, sort of like a canvas, so you don't have to frame it or anything. Supposedly, this is actually better than watercolor paper. So I'm really, really keen to see how it goes. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using ink today. I'm also going to be uh, trying out a few different things that are commonly used with ink and watercolors. So I'm starting out with the normal watercolor paper. Um, I'm going to be testing several different things. First of all, I want to see how well the pigment spreads wet on wet, which means basically I'm just going to be wetting the paper and then dropping pigment onto it and seeing sort of what happens. Next, I'm grabbing a Copic Multiliner and I'm just going to put a few strokes down. I just want to see if the uh, paper or the surface that we're using actually holds that ink. So then when I put uh, an ink wash over it, it doesn't spread. This, this sort of depends on how porous the surface is as to whether it's going to hold that or whether it's going to let the, uh, the Multiliner spread into the ink. Uh, next, I just want to see what it looks like when I blot the colour back up. Um, some surfaces don't actually hold uh, at all when you blot uh, some hole too much. I'm just curious to see how that goes because I often blot colour off when I'm painting. And then I'm going to be trying salt. Salt is a really good way of adding texture to your watercolour or ink. Uh, it does seem to only work on some surfaces though, so I want to see how that goes. And finally, I'm going to be using some masking fluid. Masking fluid is to uh, mask uh, a certain part of your painting uh, so that it stays white. I'm not so much seeing if it, it works with the ink, but I just want to see how well it peels off the surface because some surfaces hold on to it too much and then end up ripping. Okay, so now that we've got our reference on our normal watercolour paper, we're going to start with the uh, blue blocking fit. Um, I'm not going to bother showing both the blue and the cream because they're the same paper, just a different colour, but I'll show you what the cream looks like at the end. So what stood out most to me on this one was I really, really liked how it blotted. I also think that the pigment's just spreading really, really nicely on this paper, which is good. And I also tried to brush the salt off when it was still a tad wet, but you still get a good idea of what it's going to look like. Next we've got the grey Stonehenge. Uh, this is quite smooth as I mentioned, and I'm actually quite surprised how lovely the uh, pigment is spreading on this. I'm really, really liking it. Uh, the blotting didn't work quite as well. Um, it just seems like the pigment doesn't sink in as quickly, so I might just need to leave it a little bit longer on this one before I blot it. Uh, I also think that the, uh, the salt texture has worked 
really, really well on this one. So next is the watercolor canvas. I've always wanted to try this. Um, I've always hated using canvas because it just doesn't lend itself to how I paint. I tend to paint in like washy layers. Uh, so I was really excited to see that they were making watercolor canvas. Unfortunately, it seems like it doesn't hold water. So I can't do wet on wet properly. It doesn't hold the fine liner and it's just merging into my ink and looking all muddy and gross. It doesn't hold the pigment, so when I blot it, it just disappears. The masking fluid's fine, uh, and I think the only thing it does really, really well is the salt. I'm really liking the salt texture. So now we have the printing canvas. Um, I actually thought this was going to be what the watercolour canvas was like, and the watercolour canvas was going to be what the printing canvas was like, but uh, surprisingly, the printing canvas is just much better. Um, it does everything, everything better than the uh, watercolour canvas. It's also smoother, so when I use the fine liners on it, um, it doesn't have that sort of ugly canvas texture. I don't know, I'm just, I'm surprised. I really, really liked how this one worked out, actually. So we're on to the aqua board, so excited. So I'm gonna be really nitpicky with this because they claim it to be so good. The only thing that I don't, not even dislike, I just think didn't work perfectly was the blotting. I needed to do that a lot faster and the salt just doesn't quite cut it as well as it does on some of the other surfaces, but it still looks really, really good. I'm so happy with this and I really, 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 like I'm just, I'm really happy with the aqua board. I'm actually going to go out and buy bigger pieces and use this in my like everyday art practice. I love it. Hey guys, uh, I'm filming this as a total afterthought while I'm editing. Um, this is another sample of the uh, aqua board. Um, I was thinking that seeing as I'm really keen to use it in my own practice, I actually want to know how Copics work on it. Now, I mean, these aren't supposed to like, it's not made for Copics, so I'm really unsure about how it's going to go, but I'm just really curious because I do use them a lot. Um, so let's find out. Also, apologies, I'm filming this on my uh, phone just because I'm too lazy to set up my whole proper camera setup again. So far, so good. Hmm. I was not expecting this to actually work. Sorry guys, my phone ran out of batteries and I didn't realize, but this is the uh, aftermath of Copics on the uh, aqua board. And I'm actually very surprised. Like obviously they're not working as well as it would on paper made for Copics, but um, much better than I thought it would. So these are skin tones that I would normally use. And then I thought I'd just try some feathering of opposite colors. Obviously it's not quite as blended as it usually is and there was a little bit of transfer but I'm still very surprised at how well it did and then this is just the uh, colorless blender just to see how well it bleaches out which is not too bad so I reckon I could definitely um I could definitely use Copics and painting ink oh 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 one more thing to test hang on okay I want to see if it picks up the uh multi-liner off of the uh, surface or not. I'm hoping that it doesn't because that'd be amazing. Uh, what would be the best one to try? Maybe this one. Yes, I'm hoping this doesn't smudge. Fingers crossed. Ah, damn it. A little bit. Uh, and it's transferring. Ah, uh, that's disappointing. Too good to be true, but the rest of it's great. I just have to make sure if I'm using them, I'm not putting them over any kind of multi-liner or fine liner. So there you go, that's that's what it looks like all smudged. And that's the transfer. You can see some of the multi-liner in the green there. Not too bad. So here are the finished products. Um, overall, I think uh, I think what stood out to me the most was the, um, the wet on wet blending and spreading of the pigment on the Stonehenge. That was really, really nice. I think the salt worked best texture-wise on the watercolour canvas, but of course nothing else worked nicely on that. And as you all know, I like everything about the aqua board. So I think if I were to put them in uh, maybe my, my top three, it'd be in order the aqua board, uh, the Stonehenge, the grey one, and then the blocking fit, both the blue and the cream are really, really nice. So I really hope you enjoyed that one. I had so much fun with it, and I'm so excited to try that ampersand aqua board out. Um, I think I found my new favorite surface for ink. So 
So I'm really excited. I really want to like maybe do like a big artwork uh, using that so I can like really put it through its paces and see like how many layers it takes and all sorts of things. So I might do that in another video. Um, and I, I'm actually, I was genuinely surprised by some of the other uh, surfaces as well. I wasn't expecting the like uh, printing canvas to be better, or at least I thought it was better than the watercolor canvas. So um, just some interesting things there. I hope you guys uh, maybe found something you might want to try yourself um, or just, just out of interest just to see what else is out there. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was useful to you. Um, if you liked this one, in that case, please give it a thumbs up so I know to do more stuff like this. Uh, and if you want to see any of my actual artwork, seeing as you didn't see any in this, all of my links are down below. Um, I update my social medias way more often than I update here, and I'm a lot more contactable on there too. If you want to see more videos that I've done, please check them out, and if you like those, it'd be awesome if you wanted to subscribe. I'd love to have you. Uh, if you do, please don't forget to click that little bell icon, because uh, you guys know as much as I do when I'm going to update next, because I am hopeless at keeping a schedule. If you guys have any questions about any of the surfaces, or if you have any other suggestions that maybe you've tried at home, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and I think that might be it. Yeah. I really, really hope you models join me in the next video. That would be amazing. See you then. Bye.